In this video, as a follow-up to our popular strawberry wine video, we're going to make a strawberry mead. Hi, I'm Charles and welcome to DIY Fermentation, your site for doing fermentation on a shoestring budget. Now, there are no new members to give a special shout out in this video today. So if you'd like to help support this channel, A, become a member, or B, click on the subscribe button below. Also, if there are any changes to the recipe, you'll find those in the comment section below as well. I am an Amazon affiliate, so if you want to select anything that uh, you see here, please click on the links below and uh, get what you need. Now then, let's get right to it. Okay, to make our strawberry mead, we will be using the following ingredients. Anywhere between three to five pounds of strawberries, fresh, frozen, or whatever. I'm going to actually be using four pounds for this recipe. We're going to use three pounds of honey. I'm going to be using Red Star Premier Classic wine yeast. If you don't have it, use whatever you got. I'm going to be using straining bags this time. We're going to be using enough water to get to bring our level up to at least one gallon. We need something to do primary fermentation in, in which case I needed something that's going to have a wide mouth opening so I can put in those straining bags. We're going to need something to do secondary fermentation in. Jug, jar, demijohn, carboy, take your pick. We need an airlock with stopper for that. We are going to be using a hydrometer to let us know what our initial gravity reading is going to be and at the end what our final gravity reading ended up being so we can determine how much alcohol is going to be in our wine. And before we do anything, we're going to start to make sure that everything has been sanitized, which in my case, I'm going to be using star sands. You can use whatever sanitation method you choose, but it helps to have a very clean environment before you start making your meat. Now I'm using fresh strawberries, or rather they were fresh before I decided to give them a good rinse and then put them in the freezer until I was ready to use. What I neglected to do was that I should have removed the foliage on top of the strawberries. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now and we'll go ahead and move on from there. Yeah, let's put those over here. All right, with that being done, we're going to go ahead and give these one more good rinse before we put them in the straining bags. Now, one good thing about using fresh fruit or frozen fruit or fresh fruit and then freezing the fruit is that when you thaw them out, the fruit itself, in this case the strawberries, are now nice and soft. They're not firm like they would be if they were just something fresh fruit, which is great because if they were just fresh alone, we would probably have to chop these berries up before we put them in the put them in the fermenter. Instead, all I'm going to do is that I'm going to get them in the straining bag hole, straining bags hole, and I'm just going to give them a quick mash with a potato masher. Let's see, I've got three bags, so that should be enough. Go ahead and give that a quick tie, get fingers out the way that aren't being used. And yeah, I could just drop them in the, in the fermenter, call it a day. But I want to break down this structure just a little bit more by giving it just a quick little mash. And then without making a mess, get them in a fermenter. And repeat the process till we get all the berries in. Now, I've taken the opportunity to warm up our three pounds of honey so they'll flow more easily out of the bottles. And I've also warmed up 10 cups of water, which was what we're going to need to give us our full gallon, not including what we've got in terms of strawberry juice. 
Now what I want to do now is to go ahead and mix the honey and water together. And yeah, I could have done it in the fermenter first and then put in the strawberries, but it really doesn't matter either way. One of our subscribers showed me a trick of actually using a straw, inserting a straw down to the side to give the mixture air so that it can flow more easily through the funnel. Unfortunately, I don't have any straws. And the one, well, I don't, I've got straws, but they're real big and they're real thick and they're silicone and what I really needed was just a regular plastic straw, but I was trying to get away from plastic straws. And I'm going to rinse what remains of the honey in those bottles a little bit later on. Because all I want to do now at this point is put the cap on. And let's go ahead and get this mixture mixed up. Yeast will enjoy that. Okay. With that having been done, all we need to do at this point is to go ahead and add that to our fermenter. Not a little bit of a swirl, I could have stirred it. Because what I want to do now is I want to take a hydrometer reading. Yeah, I know it's got a spigot. Yeah, I know all I needed to do basically was just to turn the spigot to pour, to pour it in there. But you might not have one on whatever container you're using. So. I don't mind taking the opportunity to use plan B. Ooh, okay. Filling to the top is not going to be required. It's riding kind of high. Looks like 1.1. Looks like 1.104. It's going to be our hydrometer reading. In a moment, I'm going to pour that back in. And we are going to, no, better yet, I'm going to do this. I'm not going to pour that back in. I'm going to take out my hydrometer carefully. I'm going to take some of our must and I'm going to pour it in a bowl and I'm going to add our yeast and we're going to bloom our yeast. I think this time I'm going to use a half a teaspoon of, of wine yeast as opposed to my normal one quarter of a teaspoon Because a half a teaspoon is about all I've got left in this bag. So let's just go ahead and get that going. And besides, it's good because the honey and the water are still kind of warm. So we'll go ahead and let that uh, do its thing for the next few minutes. And then we'll add that to our strawberry honey juice mixture and begin the process of converting that into wine. All right, now that our yeast has begun showing signs of life, it's time to go ahead and add that to our fermenter. And oh, by the way, yes, that is a continuity error. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and add our yeast. 
And because a lot of it is just floating on top of the straining bags, let's go ahead and just incorporate the yeast a little bit more into the mix. Want to put on our cap. Doesn't have to be on there tight. Oh, by the, again, the, by the way, again, this uh, particular fermenter does have an air vent so that uh, I don't have to worry about pressure building up. But right now I'm more interested in the yeast being able to get as much oxygen as possible. It is now time to label our creation. What we've got here is strawberry mead started on the 13th of this year and an OG reading, I corrected OG reading of 1.116. Despite what I said earlier, let's go ahead and label that real quick. All right, all we need to do is to, for the next three to five days, go ahead and give it a little stir to add a little bit more oxygen to the mix. The yeast will appreciate that. After that, we want to rack this into our secondary and begin the long haul process of secondary fermentation. One year from now, it's strawberry mead time. Where's my wine glass? So there we go, strawberry mead.